people often talk to me about the golden age of piano playing. It's always sometime in the uh, remote past. I think the golden age of piano playing is now. I don't think there has ever been such a quantity of wonderful, interesting, accomplished artists. And when I say that, people often think that I mean that pianists can play faster than they used to. Well, actually they can, but that's not what I mean. There's a tremendous intensity of, of commitment to artistic piano playing. And uh, I, I see it, you know, when I sit at the, uh, the, the admission juries of, of the Juilliard School, I'm really astounded. Now, is that bad for pianists? Not at all. The more uh, wonderful artists you have, the more opportunity is created by those wonderful artists, and of course, the higher the level goes. People often say to me, well, what's going to happen to all those wonderful st students of yours? How many of them are going to make it? I hear that question very often. And I say that it, ex it depends on what you mean by making it. Because if you define making it as being one of the three uh, super, super, superstars uh, who gets enormous, enormous fees for, for, for concerts, by definition, None of my students are going to make it. You see, because, because the definition is that you, you, you have this tiny number uh, of people. But if by making it, you mean having an interesting, valuable, and yes, life-supporting uh, uh, profession in music, life in music, many of them will do so, and many of them do so. And um, uh, I, you know, I, I live in New York and, and I, I can't get to everything, but I see that there's hardly a day that one of my students isn't playing a concert. It's one of my ex-students, not necessarily my, sure. my students now. It's really quite remarkable. And um, do they struggle? Well, yes, they have to push. Now, why is this so? Because... You can say to me, well, things aren't the way they were in, in your day. And I can say, you're absolutely right. When I um, made my recital debut in, in New York, I was reviewed by five newspapers and two magazines. The two magazines were the New Yorker and the Saturday Review of Literature. And the, and, and the newspapers were, of course, the New York Times and the New York Herald Tribune, but also the World Telegram and Sun, the Journal American, and the post. Today, a, a debuting recitalist would be reviewed by nobody. None of those people. That is to say, by no, by no newspapers. The Times covers only very special things, and certainly it doesn't cover a, a simple recital debut. Um, and um, uh, and, and the other papers, of course, don't exist. The magazines, um, The New Yorker still exists. It's been, it's been decades since The New Yorker has deigned to, to cover a concert that doesn't have some very special snob appeal of, of, of celebrity or composer celebrity. Uh, so, that has changed. Managers, well, managers were never that good, I have to tell you. I mean, they, they were, as, as long as I've known management, it was pretty terrible. <laughs> but it's much, much worse now. But, but, artists can do so much today. They don't have newspapers, but they have the internet. They have Facebook. They have, uh, 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 they have everybody's blogs. They have so many ways of, of communicating. And, um, and uh, there are all sorts of venues today that didn't, uh, didn't exist. You know, uh, in my time, uh, people um, uh, spent 
endless hours agonizing over whether the acoustics of this great hall or that great hall were good enough. Today, you play in uh, Poisson Rouge in, in, in New York where uh, you can't even speak of uh, acoustics and everybody loves it uh, because music is related to acoustics but it's not acoustics. It's, it's, it's a spirit and, and, um, uh, and there are many, many places where you can play today. And, um, and, and I, I find also in the, the young pianists I know are wonderfully uh, uh, supportive of each other. And this, uh, I see this, of course, very much here at Piano Fest. Sure. I see it with my own students, and I see it just as much and even more with my students or other people's students who have graduated some years ago and are in the profession. And they're, they're all helping each other. You don't have to think of your life in those terms but you naturally make personal connections in the music world. And the people you know now are the people who are going to be running things in, in, in 20 years. Sure. So um, uh, all that can work out very nicely. Is it important to be nice? Absolutely. Somebody, somebody said to me once, um, it was at the beginning of my career, and this woman said to me, you know, Jerry, you're doing so well and you deserve it and I'm very happy for you. She said, but, and she named another pianist whom I won't name. She said, you know, he's a very good pianist too and he doesn't seem to have any success at all. She said, do you think that's because he's such a disagreeable person? <laughs> and I said, yes, actually, <laughs> I, I, I do think. You can be disagreeable, but then you have to be twice as good. So, um, uh, so it, uh, it, it, it helps to, to, to be, to be, to be pleasant, to be polite to people, to be appreciative and, and uh, sure. Yes. Here we are.